Hi, I'm Andy Howard, an application engineer with Keysight Pathwave Design Software, ADS. I'm going to show several examples of plotting and analyzing measured load pull data from Focus using ADS. ADS has had for many years the ability to read in Focus LPD files. However, Focus software is also able to write out MDIF files from which ADS datasets can be created. I will show the flexible plotting and analysis of data from these datasets. I will start with simpler plots and progress to more complex analyses. This shows efficiency and gain versus output power plots as well as efficiency, gain, and output power contours at a specific gain compression point selected by the G-Comp marker. Marker M3 is on an efficiency contour and marker M4 is on a power contour. Other data corresponding to these markers is shown. This data display plots data at NDB backoff from a specified output power. You enter both N and the unbacked off output power, PDEL DBM desired. The light blue dots indicate the loads where this power level was not achieved in the measured data. This data display is specifically for Doherty power amplifier analysis. It helps you determine the load to present to the carrier device prior to the peaking device turning on and the load to present when the peaking device is fully on. All contours on the left Smith chart are for a specific output power set by the PDEL DBM desired and NDB back off equations. Marker M1 is on a 1 dB gain compression contour and should be positioned near the maximum efficiency point. At 1 dB gain compression we can assume the peaking device is about to turn on. On the right Smith chart are contours at 3 dB gain compression specified by the G-Comp marker and a VSWR circle is drawn centered on the M1 marker location. The load seen by the carrier device will move from M1 to a point on the circle as the peaking device turns on. When you move M1 the VSWR circle's position will be updated. The VSWR circle's magnitude can be set arbitrarily. Marker M2 is on the VSWR circle and should be positioned close to the load that produces the maximum power. Data corresponding to the marker locations is shown. The traces on the right correspond to the marker locations also. Note that a logical condition is used to exclude measured load points that do not satisfy certain conditions. This is very useful if you have noisy measured data or want to exclude outlying points or want to restrict the data in some other way. Similarly, there are other data displays for plotting contours and data from an LPC MDIF file. This shows contours from data files at three different frequencies of power, efficiency, and gain at a specified gain compression point. VSWR circles are drawn and the centers of these may be set arbitrarily. Data corresponding to the MVSWR markers is shown. Here, there are also logic conditions being used to exclude the outlying data points. This also shows contours at a specified gain compression point, again from the same three data files, but this time with all the efficiency contours together, all the power contours together, and all the gain contours together. These indicate how the optimal load moves with frequency. This shows contours of efficiency and gain at a specified output power and at three different frequencies. Contours of maximum power at the three different frequencies are also shown. So far, I have shown ways of plotting and analyzing measured load pull data in the ADS data display. But ultimately, you would like to use the data to design impedance matching networks to get the best performance from the measured devices. I will show a few techniques for doing this. Say I have used the above techniques to determine an optimal load impedance to present to a device. Now I want to design an impedance matching network that will transform an external load impedance to the impedance the device wants to see. These are the measured load pull contours at the device. The reference impedance is set to 5 ohms. This is a simple ideal step transmission line impedance transformer meant to transform an external 25 ohm impedance to the device plane. This shows the contours at the external load with the matching network connected. Note the reference impedance for this Smith chart is 25 ohms. From the contours you can see what performances would be obtained for other external loads. 
The black circles indicate the region of external load reflections that would produce valid results based on the limits of the measured data. Marker M6 is on one of the circles and data corresponding to this marker shows what would be obtained with this external load. You may also use optimization, tuning, or parameter sweeps to determine the best impedance matching network parameter values. This shows an optimization setup. At each optimization trial, impedance matching network parameters are selected, an S-parameter simulation is run, and the impedance presented to the device is calculated. The corresponding XDB gain compression data is read from a file, and power, gain, and efficiency at the external load are calculated. Depending on how the goals are defined, the optimizer adjusts the matching network parameters to maximize performance. This shows the results of the optimization, including performance at the, at the external load and matching network parameter values. Certainly results will vary with the impedance matching network topology, measured load pool data, and how you define the goals. You could set up a more useful optimization if you have measured load pool data at multiple frequencies.